Okay, we're going to try this other rig here. I've got a little setup. I thought we would do some basic talking about video signals. This is a patch panel. This one is made by ADC. Uh, I've also got some in there by Trumpeter. And basically, your signals come in on the top and go out on the bottom. And so if there's nothing connected, this signal comes in and goes right back out. But you can interrupt that signal path with a patch cord. So, for example, in this case, the monitor here uh, is the third hole over, and that just killed the signal to the monitor. But if I plug this back in, there I've got the same signal back. So this cord going from top to bottom in the same row amounts to the same thing as having nothing plugged in there. So what I've got is schematically here, I've got a sync generator, which is this bottom unit here. And it's feeding a signal that we call black into hole number one of the patch panel. I hope you can see this all right. I'm kind of using a weird rig here. Okay, then hole number two is going to the vector scope which is this unit right here that we'll talk about in just a second. So with nothing plugged in, this just passes straight through. All right. Now then, the second hole, which is actually the third one, I just skipped one to make it a little easier to see. This is coming from a sync generator in the other room, and that's bars that are our external signal. And if nothing's plugged in, those are going to our monitor there. All right. So then in the third row, I don't have an input, or the third column rather, but I have an output. And that one is going to the waveform monitor. Okay, so... Hopefully that all makes sense. I don't need to show you how it all got hooked up. But for example, if I plug a patch cord in here, then that goes away from the monitor because it's been interrupted. And if I plug it in this hole, then it shows up here on the waveform monitor. Now that's a very terrible looking waveform and this is kind of an important point here. This waveform monitor has external sync, and right now we're not really genlocked right. If I switch this to internal, now all of a sudden we have beautiful looking bars. That's exactly the way they're supposed to look. Uh, and we'll talk about that in a minute. This is looking at the bars horizontally, this is the left side of the picture, this is the right side of the picture, this is black, and this is white. So I can look at them horizontally, or I can look at the pictures vertically. And then in this case, all the lines that make up the picture have been squeezed together. And this is the top of the picture, and this is the bottom of the picture. So we'll talk a little bit more about the waveform monitor and, and how to look at some important things in the video signal. But the point of this is just that with this patch cord, I can then control where this signal's going. So this goes in a rack, and you want to think carefully about what you want to connect through the patch panel because, you know, this might be a camera. And this might be an input to a switcher, but someday you might want to send the camera somewhere else. Or someday you might want to send something else into that input of your switcher. 
So that's just a brief kind of overview of what's going on with the patch panel. Um, this one is an ADC, and I've found that ADC patch cords work best with ADC panels. Uh, I've got some trumpeter cables here, and they will actually work, but I find them to be a little intermittent with an ADC panel, whereas the trumpeter cables work great with a trumpeter patch panel. Um, go figure. All right, so now let's uh, do something a little different here. I'm going to patch the signal generator in the other room into the vector scope. And here you see a vector display. And what this is showing us is the chroma. And there are little boxes here for cyan, yellow, magenta, all the colors that are in color bars. This little uh, bar that sticks over here is the color burst. And that's going to be there whether there's a signal or not. So the idea is that the distance out from the center is the amount of chroma or saturation of a color. And then the angle around this circle is the phase angle, which amounts to the hue. So when you turn the hue on your TV set, you're really just doing something like this, which causes the yellow to shift more green or more red. Of course, I guess TV sets don't even have a hue control on them anymore. But this is analog video, and this is the way that that works. All right, so it's just a basic monitor. So is the waveform monitor, and to keep it simple, I'm just patching different things into different things here. So let's go back and look for a second at the picture monitor. Normally, that's the way you would see the picture on a TV set. However, on this one, we have underscan, and we have what's called a pulse cross which delays the horizontal and delays the vertical. All right, now, not many people realize it, but in time, with an analog signal, when you get to the right-hand side of the screen, the picture stops, and then this black area is called a horizontal sync pulse. And then the picture starts again, and this is now the left-hand side of the screen, this little green thing here is called the color burst. And the color burst is what references that chroma that we looked at a second ago on the vector scope to know what color, what phase and amplitude chroma information is that's within the picture. So it's, it's sort of like we've shifted everything up out of phase and again, this is the right-hand side of the picture, and this is the left-hand side of the picture. And normally you don't see that because it looks like that. But when you go into this pulse cross mode, you can see that. Now then vertically, we've got the same thing that's going on where we have a bar. Some of you might have seen this if your TV didn't have a good vertical hold. Those are called equalizing pulses. This is the bottom of the picture. You've got your equalizing pulses and your vertical sync, and then this is the top of the picture. So that's all going on around the edges of the TV picture, and you never are really even aware of it, but it's definitely there. So let's take a look now at the same thing on the waveform monitor. So I'm going to patch this one over to here. Okay, so now on the waveform monitor, this is a vertical display again. Top of the picture, bottom of the picture. Now I'm going to go back to the horizontal display. And again, this is the left side of the picture and the right side of the picture. And I'm going to magnify it. I just have to be able to find all my buttons here.
I'm going to move it over here. Here's the, the right side of the picture. The picture stops. We have a sync pulse. This is that color burst that's the reference that tells everything, how much color and what saturation and hue is. And so you see, here's the first bar. That's actually the uh, plugs down at the bottom that's kind of a purple color. And then here's actually the first bar, which is yellow. And so the amount of that sine wave in there is the saturation of the color and its phase with respect to this color burst determines the hue. So we'll go back to normal here. So really when you are inspecting an analog video signal, you want to look to see that your sync goes from 0 to minus 0.4. It's, it's, this is basically a 1 volt peak-to-peak -peak signal between the sync tip and peak white. And white doesn't really want to go beyond this, although some chroma will sometimes go up to 120 units. Now then, that's the way that we can look at different things in time with uh, the waveform monitor. We can also look at uh, different frequency filters. This is what's called flat, which shows us everything. If I push that, what I've done is I've filtered out all the chroma. So now you see that these are the steps which amount to a grayscale. If we go back to our monitor here for a second, and uh, let's see, do I have a mono button or can I just turn the chroma down? Yeah, if I turn the chroma down, it's just a grayscale, and that's what we were just seeing there. So that's what we see when we filter out all the chroma. We can also look at just the chroma. And so that's what's getting added to that grayscale picture to cause the monitor to display those colors. So that's just kind of a real quick overview of what's going on with the video signal and how we can look at it different ways with some of these monitors. And uh, I'll show you another trick. There's a blue only switch on this. So if your hue is off or if your hue is wrong on the monitor, this display will show you that pretty readily because the blue bar basically is the same amplitude on and off. And so by selecting blue only, that's a good way to just roughly line up your phase without having to use a vector scope. So that's just a quick overview and uh, the patch panel, some things about the sync signals and NTSC color. And um, just thought I'd take a moment to sort of review that and we'll pick it up again and start putting stuff in the rack. And I'll see you soon.